so this was round five of the tournament. At this point, I'm on uh, two out of four, so an even score. I'm playing black against um, one of the GMs in the tournament, Leonid Udasin. Uh, Udasin, I also played him in the previous Norm event. Um, so this was his third event in a row. Um, so I can only imagine how, how tired he was feeling. And um, yeah, I wasn't exactly sure what to expect in the opening here because he was definitely playing a lot of kind of like side uh, sidelines and somewhat offbeat systems against the uh, Sicilian. Um, but uh, generally, I'm quite happy in the Sicilian when the opponent is going for pretty much any sideline. So I was uh, kind of looking looking forward to it. And he ends up playing uh, C3 Sicilian, which I think was pretty surprising for me. I don't think I had seen many, many games of his where he where he did this. Um, but I stuck to my usual line here, knight of six, e5, knight e5, d4, takes. Um, and here he takes with the queen. So this is kind of his, um, I guess, uh, wrinkle. Normally white takes with the pawn here, and there's tons and tons of theory in this position. It's a um, big, big main line, but um, overall, you know, pretty solid position for, for black, really. Definitely double-edged. Taking with the queen, I felt like, has always been a little bit uh, somewhat speculative, but... Yeah, it kind of gives the position a uh, very unusual character. Though I feel like I got a great position out of the opening in this game. So I went knight c6, queen e4, and uh, f5. This is kind of a typical idea here. If white takes on passant, then black can take with the knight, and black gets a very strong center with two pawns. So a lot of times white uh, drops back with queen to e2. And um, yeah, I definitely wasn't expecting this line for this game. It is a variation I've seen before. And uh, I remembered that black has really interesting ideas here with this uh, pawn sacrifice of b5. So I spent a couple minutes, but then I, I just played it because I felt like I know this is the move and um, I can kind of understand the idea behind it. It's just to open lines and get some development. So I, I felt like this was just a good choice uh, to play. Um, regardless of how well, you know, I knew the the theory or the follow-up. Um, and the basic idea with this one is that if white takes this pawn, then black can play like a5 here, or even queen c7 first, targeting this one, and then a5, bishop a6. You basically just get tons and tons of play um, on the queen side and, and lots of nice development. Um, I think it's a very interesting pawn sacrifice. I'd be happy to play this position anytime. Um, someone asked the question if f5 is only an idea if it comes with, with tempo. I, I don't know. I think even when it does come with tempo, it's not always a great move. But here I think here it does make sense because we're, we're fighting for some space and, and winning the, the e4 square. Um, so it really kind of depends on the situation. But black does get a kind of a nice lead in development um, here. Because if I were to play like queen c2, then there's always queen c7 and this pawn is kind of awkward to defend. So generally white goes for this setup with queen e2 and then tries to fianchetto the bishop, but that of course gives black time to uh, set up some counterplay with, with bishop a6. So that's kind of the general idea, so I went with it. White played g3, um, I pushed a5. I think starting with bishop e7 um, after looking at the game is probably more accurate because it doesn't give white any options of going like knight h4 and, uh, and bishop g2 and kind of targeting this knight on d5. Um, but I played a5 here, which I think is okay, bishop g2. And um, now I definitely, I think, should have started with bishop e7. Uh, in the game, it ends up not mattering. I play bishop a6, white castles, and I go bishop e7 here. Of course, b4 is met with c4, and black doesn't really have any anything special here. I think it's actually stronger to just kind of keep this move uh, in reserve, so white always has to worry about it. Um, but yeah, on bishop a6, white could have played knight h4, which is kind of annoying, because white's earning like knight takes f5, and bishop takes d5, and it's not so easy for black to uh, to deal with this move. So bishop e7, starting with this one, I think, much more accurate, and then we can get the, the same position with, with bishop a6. Um, so castles bishop e7, and now I play rook e1, I castled, and here, I, I mean, I was feeling quite quite good about my position, I just felt like everything's developed, and I have a lot of... Um, useful moves to play like rook c8, queen b6. Uh, at some point I can look for b4 ideas and 
yeah, it just seemed like a very healthy position. Um, and then white ends up playing queen d1, and then I definitely started feeling very good, because, I mean, the queen, like, has spent so many moves to get back to d1 that, okay, now, you know, black's position has to be quite nice. So I went rook c8. I think I, I played quite logically here. Queen b6, knight f1, bishop c5. Here white goes uh, knight to e3, because, of course, f2 is under attack, and white doesn't want to give up the, the bishop for the knight. And um my first thought on at this point was to play for f4 which looks very natural i'm um, just trying to kind of disturb white on the king side but it felt like the game would likely follow this path knight takes d5 the idea would be to take on f2 here king h1 now i gotta take the knight because uh, it was hitting the queen queen takes d5 check king h8 and i was looking at this position for a while and i felt like you know if white plays rook f1 or something like this, and then I take on g3. That seemed kind of reasonable. You know, I'm taking a lot of pawns, again, around white's king, and um, looks like, you know, it, we'd have a lot to play for. Bishop can always draw back to b7, and there's play on the diagonal. But then I realized most likely white's probably just going to play bishop takes f4 in this position, and just sacrifice the exchange, but fix the king side, get everything developed, and then I looked at this position for a little bit, you know, and in the visualization, like I definitely did not want to play this over the board because to me this felt like white would just have huge uh, practical compensation. And indeed, Engine actually says this one is about about equal, which means, yeah, white has tons and tons of compensation for the exchange. So long story short, I, I realized I don't need to like do anything immediately. I can just keep the tension. And I found knight c7, which I think is a much stronger move. Just reinforcing the knight on d5, opening up the diagonal for the bishop, opening up the c-file. And white doesn't really have a great great way to develop here because of this very annoying pressure on uh, on f2. So knight d4, I think this is kind of logical. Uh, I played bishop b7, again reinforcing the knight on d5, otherwise white could take and, uh, and spoil the structure. Here white uh, brings this knight back to c2, and... Yeah, at this point, I basically started considering two moves. This is actually a very interesting moment, which I, uh, I don't know, very instructive for me. I mean, basically, I was thinking about b4 and f4 here, and I thought both moves were good. The first move I looked at was uh, b4, and uh, it was very important to understand that c4 could be met with bishop takes d4, and the c-pawn is hanging. So white doesn't have this... Uh, this move that they would really like to play. And if queen takes d4, then we trade queens, and then again, c4 pawns uh, lost. So on b4, I felt like, well, life is good. I mean, if white takes, we can recapture, and then f4 is coming next, and there's just, again, just tons of pressure on the f-file. This is great. Uh, if bishop d2, then things are also good. I can play f4 here. Like, it's just putting pressure on all sides of the board. Like, black is, is doing great. Um, then I started looking at f4, and I was trying to figure out, okay, maybe f4 first is, is more accurate for some reason. And to me, this also looked fine. <laughs> so I also looked good. Uh, and then next move, I, you know, I can um, see what white does, but I can go b4 next move if I want to. I can maybe uh, look for some kind of knight f5 ideas as well, um, which might be annoying, or fg at some point. Um, but I basically felt like I'm probably going to be playing one of these two moves um, one right after the other, either f4 first and then b4, or b4 first and then f4. So eventually I decided just to go b4 first, because I felt like, okay, this move is harmless, white's going to have to like defend the pawn, maybe bishop d2, maybe like try some rook b1 or something, but okay, I improved my position on the queen side, and now I can play um, f4. Um, but uh, yeah, Udasan ends up spending, I think, quite a bit of time here, and... Uh, eventually he ends up playing c4. So like the move I kind of discarded because I, I felt like, okay, it's just losing a pawn. But of course, upon reflection, it's actually by far by far the best move for white in the position because everything else is actually terrible. Like if, if black gets f4 and then this is really, the king side is just going to collapse in a couple of moves. And now there's no more c4 because um, black will just take on d4 and everything is... Uh, collapsing in, in white's position. 
So he realized actually that he's kind of in danger here and realized that he does need to just give this pawn, um, but at least he can go into the end game. And okay, white's, white's a pawn down, but they're now in an end game. The king is not getting attacked. There's no pressure on the diagonal. It's a lot safer than it was a couple moves ago. So a very good practical decision because I, I really struggled to, uh, to try and win this one. Um, and so yeah, looking back on it, definitely f4 first was was the right move, just to get this pressure in. Then I can play uh, b4 next or not. But yeah, not giving White this kind of bailout opportunity would have been would have been more prudent. So yeah, very interesting moment for me where you know I kind of thought like, okay, well this is great, but actually it could have could have been playing for more than than just being uh, a pawn up. So knight b3. And um, here White's just trying to get uh, as quick counterplay as possible. Um, I played rook a8, just defending the pawn. I think a4 was also was also an idea. Uh, bishop g5. And here I went for knight g6 um, with... I wasn't too sure about how to play this one. Of course, with bishop g5, like White's starting to take on e7. Um, the engine recommends a4, which I definitely was just not really thinking about, but the idea is to hit the knight and um, and and just take on b3 in case the bishop takes e7, just taking this one, just ignoring the, the knight on e7, so kind of like a, a counterattack. Um, and if knight d2, then black can consider um, either rook c2 here, or maybe just rook c7, defending this one, and then kind of covering up with, with bishop c6, and, and holding on to very, very healthy extra pawn. But I don't know, somehow I, I felt like knight g6 is uh, good enough, so I went with this one. I didn't really consider other options here too, too carefully. Um, rook a c1, rook takes c1, and bishop takes c1. So this was kind of um, the main thing I calculated, that if white takes with the rook here, then I can go ahead and snag a second pawn. And knight c5 looks like everything is kind of under attack, but I can play bishop c6 and everything is just barely uh, held together. So there's no tactics with knight e6 because we take and bishop is defended and um, if f4, then I think we can go knight f7 and just tag the bishop on, on g5. Um, and so, yeah, to me this looked like black is doing well. So rook c1, white takes with the bishop. And uh, now I pushed a4, knight c5, and I played bishop c6 and I felt like I've kind of stabilized here, but it actually wasn't so simple. Because uh, if I could just hold on to the extra pawn, then there's lots of pieces on the board. I, I think there's good winning chances. Um, but here, white plays bishop takes d5. And uh, of course, I got to take with the bishop, taking with the pawn just too ugly. And I was kind of expecting knight takes d7 here, but then I can go bishop takes a2. And this endgame, I was very happy to play because I felt like the outside pass pawn is going to be very strong and very hard for white to, to deal with. I can bring my bishop back to d5 at some point, or maybe b3, put my rook somewhere on a6 or a5, just kind of depending. And then, yeah, the a pawn could be uh, quite strong here. Um, but instead of taking on d7, white plays bishop d2. And this move is actually much more annoying because white hits this pawn first. I actually just don't have a great way to hold on to everything because rook b8 runs into either knight takes d7 but actually knight a6 I think is even even better for white and then white can take with the knight on b4 and even defend the a2 pawn. So if black is not getting the like outside passer here then it starts to become very difficult to uh, to win it and yeah I couldn't really find the uh, best way to um, Great chances here. There actually was one trick that I missed in the game. So um, I could have played rook to b8 and then on knight a6, rook b5, let's say knight takes b4, there is bishop takes a2 at the end, which is uh, kind of a neat trick. I don't know how great black's winning chances are here, but at least I can snag this pawn and um, yeah, e pawn is still kind of under attack. Definitely would keep some chances. Um, but okay, instead of knight a6, white has other moves as well. For example, f4, and and uh, white is doing um, much better. So, yeah, I think the main opportunity was actually back here, playing knight g6. I think instead of playing a4, it's probably going to be more ambitious. Though I did have a chance later on in this game. I ended up playing b3, 
takes, bishop takes, bishop c3, uh, rook to c8. Now, of course, I'm kind of hoping for knight takes d7 here, so I could play a3, and you know the, the pawn starts to become pretty strong. Um, instead, white goes bishop to b4, and yeah, now I played rook to c7, but this gave white the chance to play f4. Okay, still a pawn down, but very, very good drawing chances, of course, with the opposite color bishops. Now that my knight is kind of stuck, like it's going to need some time to get back into the game. White basically just has enough here to uh, to hold. Um, so I played bishop to d5. Also, at a certain point, white is ready to just take on b3, bring the rook around, and uh, and then the rook and bishop would be stronger than uh, my rook and knight here, for sure. Um, so bishop d5, rook a1, and yeah, essentially I'm just actually not able to hold on to this pawn, bishop c6. Now, if knight takes a4, then, of course, there's uh, uh, rook a7 here, which is, I guess, kind of another trick. And then if b3, rook b7, and at least I'm getting this pawn, and, okay, maybe I can try to infiltrate with my rook somehow and, and cause some damage, some h5, h4. You know, it could be uh, pretty annoying. Um, but rook a3, just getting ready to take the pawn without falling into any, uh, any unfortunate pins. Uh, I played rook a7 here. Bishop c3. Uh, okay, this is another trick I was hoping for. In case of b3, then I could take. And if rook takes a7, we have this one. And uh, you know, it has three pieces, but cannot stop the pawn. Um, and okay, of course, if white takes, then, well, we keep our extra pawn. We get rook a2. You know, this, this is pretty annoying as well. Um, but no, bishop c3. And now I'm really just not able to stop b3. And uh, here, white is able to uh, just trade everything off. We, we, we reach uh, this end game where, yeah, black is up a pawn still, but very, very hard to do anything with uh, with this one. I think it's more or less a, a dead draw. Um, so I tried for a bit, but yeah, couldn't really um, couldn't really make anything happen. I just maneuvered a bunch, tried to get the king in, but. White's king was always kind of uh, in time. And, uh, yeah. I mean, there are some scenarios I felt like where black could win. Like, if I could trade the bishop for the knight and have knight versus bishop, then that would be very difficult, but very hard to achieve, of course. Um, and here, actually, white ends up kind of forcing a draw in a nice way, where my knight somehow gets stuck on f3. And white is able to play knight e1. I gotta go knight g1, but now king f2. And I'm not really able to uh, escape with the knight. So here we uh, just agree to a draw because of this uh, repetition. So yeah, um, my last chance actually, to, going back a bit to try and push more, seems to have been at this moment. I played rook c7 covering the d-pawn, giving white the chance to play f4. Apparently black should have played f4 right away and gone for this activity, which makes sense. I mean, if white takes on d7, the rook can enter, and this is immediately problematic with bishop c3. There's always a3 ideas, and um, yeah, of course, here black has a lot of a lot of active potential, um, and, and the pawn is just, just very strong. So... Yeah, this is this is kind of a missed chance because it's still pretty unpleasant for white. He can take on b3, um, but then we're recapturing and we're thinking about maybe playing f3 here. Um, and then, of course, the knight has a lot of squares that it can jump on um, from uh, from g6. Not to mention e5 pawn can always be a possible target. So this was kind of unfortunate. Like... I, sh I really should have realized that allowing f4 for white would, would give them uh, pretty nice saving chances. But that's how it goes sometimes. So, yeah, overall, like, I felt like it was an all right game. You know, we, we got a great opening and uh, really nice advantage in the middle game. But then it's like almost like we or I underestimated the position. Like, I thought, okay, if I win an extra pawn, like, that's definitely good enough. You know, I'll try to convert. But, yeah, maybe I could have been playing for more back. Uh, at this point 
And then, of course, the end game, definitely we uh, we could have made better use of our chances. So, uh, overall, definitely not a bad result, but yeah, the play could have, uh, could have been better.